Hey plant nerds, welcome back to my channel. Today we are partaking in a single malt whiskey. It is a mesquite smoked whiskey from Dalbeck uh, Distillery, which is actually local here to Arizona. It's in Tucson. Cheers. Hi there, long time no see. I started getting comments and messages asking me where I am or what I'm up to, why I haven't put out any videos, and it started to make me feel a little bit guilty. Uh, but I just wanted to let you guys know from me that if I ever decide to stop making videos or stop doing YouTube, I will let you know. I'm not just gonna ghost you. But yeah, I've just kind of taken an unexpected break, not for any particular reason other than, you know, this year. <laughs> I've never set a schedule for myself as far as YouTube goes, and I have done that intentionally because I know myself, and I know that if I set a schedule, it'll turn to more of a job. And I started YouTube because I love it. I love creating videos, I love plants, and I didn't want it to be something that felt like a task. So if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button down below and also that bell icon which will notify you when I finally do decide to put a video out. Although I haven't been making YouTube content regularly, I have been using a lot of other outlets for my creativity. I started volunteering at a local organization here in town, the Southwest Center for HIV slash AIDS. I've been kind of creating some videos for them. I also started a podcast with my two really good friends, Becca and Nicole. You may have heard of them. They do plant stuff on YouTube. I'll have the links down below if you wanna check out the podcast. It really is just a time where three friends get together and just chat. And we talk plants and we talk life. Becca, Nicole, and I met a little over a year ago for the first time in person. And making friends as adults doesn't come easy. So when I met them and we've harbored this friendship, it's just been it's just been really great. So yeah, check out the podcast if you feel so inclined. And also, like I created some more hats for my merch. I have a bunch of merch on my website, www.notdude.com. These are probably my favorite thing in the whole world. It's my logo, which is the Monstera leaf with these really cool glasses. And then on the side of the hats, you have my catchphrase. Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say it's mine. The catchphrase I use, plant nerds. Yeah, there's still quite a few of these available in the store. If you like hats or you know somebody who likes hats, this would be a great gift. But I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be sitting here in front of the camera. And today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite, favorite species in all of my plant collection, which is Hoya. If you've seen the title of the video, you'll know exactly what it's about. Now, as plant parents, plant collectors, we, if you are falling in love with Hoya, chances are you're falling in love with it because of the foliage. Hoya plants, whether you go from this Callistophylla that has these beautiful, veiny, lance-shaped leaves to this Hoya croniana black leaves with these just gorgeous, dark green, almost black leaves to one of my prized Hoya, the Hoya obovata variegata splash, which actually has been chopped to propagate. This thing was probably about maybe like a foot and a half tall and now now it's down to this. If you're collecting Hoya 90% of the time you're going to be just staring at this plant's foliage. But the real pat on the back, the real thumbs up that you can get from your Hoya is when they flower. When they start waving around that plant genitalia, that's when you know that they're happy, that you've done a wonderful job and today I wanted to take this video to show you five Hoya in my personal collection that are constantly flowering. Not just a sporadic flower, 
I'm talking about they flower, the buds drop off, immediately you can see new buds forming. And these five Hoya in today's video are all under that category. For any Hoya parent out there, you just, you know that the flower is the end game. <laughs> they are so beautiful. They have such a gorgeous smell. They look delicious, if that's a thing. I am constantly being asked, Adam, how are all your Hoyas flowering so much? What is your magic recipe? And I don't have one. As I've progressed through my plant collection or plant collecting, I've realized that there are specific species that I can have that don't take a ton of effort on my part or a drastic change in my environment. I live in Arizona. It is dry, 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 dry. I was constantly filling up humidifiers, trying to monitor humidity levels, and it just got to be a lot. It was taking the joy out of caring for plants. And I do still have some of those plants that are a bit more needy, if you would say that. As I've continued down this journey, I've kind of just focused my energy, focused my collecting on specific plants that will thrive and be happy in the environment that I can give them without much fuss. So Hoya have surprisingly been such a wonderful plant here in Arizona. I have most of my Hoya hanging in this window and in the shelves behind me. This is an east facing window, so it gets morning light only and some ambient afternoon light. And I do have some supplemental grow lights. It's just these Ikea lamps with GE grow bulbs. So that's my care. Most of my Hoya are in passive hydro. They're in LECA as a growing medium. I'm watering them with a nutrient solution. I'm flushing them. All of the stuff that comes with doing passive hydro. Really, that's like that's my only care that I'm doing. So I don't know. They just seem really happy here in this space. And that makes me happy because I absolutely love all of these plants. Let's show you the flowering Hoya. So the first Hoya that I want to talk about today is the Hoya Species Affinity Bertinae. And this one, this one has surprised me. I randomly picked this one up at a store in uh, Nebraska. It was a small little cutting. I think it was like $9.99. It took a long time to produce a peduncle, but as you can see on this plant now, there are multiple peduncles all over it and every single one of them just flowers constantly. I'll try to zoom in here so you can see, but the peduncle definitely, you can see how long it is, and then you can see the new buds forming on the end of it, and that's how every single one of these peduncles are. This one currently doesn't have flowers showing, but you can definitely see them developing along the stem. And the leaves of this Hoya are they're just beautiful. They feel like velvet. They have this dark purple ridge to the outside of the, the leaf. I love it. I've shared this plant a couple times with some people, so I have cut it. It propagates really easily. It's just a beautiful Hoya if you want a flowering Hoya. The flowers on this particular Hoya are like a deep burgundy color. People say these blooms smell like butterscotch, but I, am completely unable to smell anything. I, every single time that this Hoya blooms, I shove my nose deep into that plant genitalia and I, nothing, I smell nothing. It would be nice to smell butterscotch, but regardless, it's still, it's still beautiful. Now, the next Hoya that I want to talk about is this beautiful Hoya Rebecca. This plant has grown incredibly well for me. As you can see here, it just like doesn't stop growing. I have shared this plant quite a few times with some friends. I have cut it. It continues to put out new growth. It continues to grow more peduncles. This one has just been, this one's been a surpriser to me because I never expected it to get to the state that it is in now, but I absolutely adore this plant. I'll try to do some close-ups, but there are tons. There's tons of peduncles growing all over this plant that are just producing buds and they continue to produce buds and flowers one after the other. This one does have a really beautiful smelling 
flower it smells to me it smells like a lily but not not as overwhelming as a little like a real lily is it's just this really sweet perfumey scent and the flowers have a bit of like a pink tinge to them when they're unopened and when they open up it's like they're kind of like a dusty pink color especially if they've been in the sun they definitely develop a deeper color with more light. If you're looking for a Hoya that is gonna be flowering and gives you those beautifully smelling blooms, go for the Hoya Rebecca. Another Hoya that is constantly in bloom is my Hoya Lacanosa. And this one actually has just today opened up a bunch of buds on this one peduncle. So you can kind of see here, the Lacanosa blooms are a little fuzzy. They kind of have like this little like furry jacket around them. And these ones also, they smell so good. There are peduncles and blooms forming all over this thing. It's just creating this beautiful aroma in this corner behind me here because that's where it hangs. I know that me personally, when I first saw a Lacanosa, it wasn't anything that seemed special, just the plain uh, green Lacanosa. However, this has quickly become one of my favorite Hoya. The flowers themselves, they just smell so wonderful. They're beautiful to look at. It's constantly presenting flowers. As it's gotten more mature, the leaves have gotten so much cool texture on them. Let's see if I can get a close up here on the other view, but you can kind of see how those leaves have like almost rippled like abs. This Hoya, this Hoya works out. Sorry if you see that moving behind me, all of these hang up there in macrame hangers and they're never easy to get down. This next Hoya that has flowered a lot for me is this Hoya Carnosa Crinkle 8. I will say this plant for the longest time did nothing. It grew beautifully, but it wasn't producing peduncles. It wasn't producing blooms. One day it did, it pushed out a peduncle and bloomed and flowered. And ever since that day, it has just continued to just do the bloom cycle. After they fall off, the new ones start coming. Although it's not currently flowering, it does have blooms starting. And this one, I can tell you, smells, to me, this Hoya bloom smells like a Tootsie Roll. It's got like this florally chocolatey scent. It is just, uh, it's so good. This particular plant on this one vine here is growing two different blooms. So there's one right here and then run on the tip here that is putting out buds. This one has like these beautiful pink colored flowers. And again, they smell, they smell like chocolate or cocoa, something in that realm to me. And it's just lovely. And the last Hoya that I wanna talk about today is one of my absolute favorite in my collection. It has been one of the most prolific blooming Hoya and also one of the most prolific growing Hoya. This is the Hoya Sunrise. This thing has grown like gangbusters. You can see how big this plant is now. I have actually cut this plant at least four times and it just continues to put out new growth it continues to put out flowers and it's just i mean if you have the chance to get a hoya sunrise do not pass it up this one is such a great plant to have and rewards you with beautiful foliage with beautiful flowers all of it this hoya is really beautiful when it's sun stressed as you can see from this particular one you have some of this foliage that is like burgundy um, some of these newer leaves at the top here are have that red sun stress color to them and going down the vine all of the different colors that this plant presents to you this one's definitely a stunner but the blooms on this plant are similar to the Rebecca. They're like a pink color, especially if it's sun stressed. I know it's the title of the video, but this one is constantly rewarding me with blooms, rewarding me with new growth. All of the different peduncles that are blooming on this plant currently, there are so many of them and new ones pop up every single day it feels like. 
Uh, some of them are brand new, some of them have flowered before. This one right here on the end is a, is a brand new one as it's in a spot where the new growth for the plant hasn't come out yet. And very similar to the other Hoyas, this one does have a very sweet florally lily type smell. And some of these peduncles are huge. This is, this is a new vine from this Hoya. And down here where my thumb is, is a peduncle. And there's another one at the top of that growth, right there. All right, guys, that is my video for today. If you are in the market for a Hoya that flowers, then please try to find one of these five Hoya wherever you can get one. Out of all of the Hoya that I own, these five are the ones that are blooming constantly. So I wanted to highlight them. But there are so many Hoya that I have that have never bloomed. My Obavada, which you can kind of see back here, and Pubicalyx and Carii on this wall climbing up it. All of those have produced peduncles, but never have any of them bloomed. It just kind of, it takes time. I'm not doing anything special for these five Hoya. They are literally just existing and they are blooming. Have some patience. Not all of mine flowered right away. Some of them were six months, some of them were a year, some of them were a year and a half. But once they finally did flower, it just, it's not stopping. So it's really exciting. Any hoodle, that's the video for today. That's all I have for you. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below. Leave me a comment. Let me know your favorite flowering Hoya. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh wait, I have an ending. That's right. And as always, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Thanks for watching.